The Nintendo Switch has been out for over six years, and throughout that time, over 4,500 games have been released, some of which are amazing and others that are complete rubbish. So I took to the internet to ask you guys what your favorite Switch game is. So here are the best Nintendo Switch games according to you and why you love them. Starting off today's list is by far the game which was mentioned the most and that's Animal Crossing New Horizons. But the thing that made this really interesting isn't just the fact that it was picked, but also everyone's reasoning basically seems to be the same and I couldn't have agreed more. One comment read, this was the first time I played any Animal Crossing game and it changed my life. It helped me through a lot of difficult times and introduced me to cozy gaming and the online community. Another comment says how it got them through the pandemic and brought people together from all over the world into the community. Someone else commented that this is the main reason why they bought a Nintendo Switch as a birthday present to themselves and was very happy that a game was made where you can decorate outside as well. And honestly, I don't think I could have agreed more. The day I bought Animal Crossing will literally stay in my mind forever as it was actually the day before lockdown started in the UK. And it was such a bittersweet moment as I went and picked up the game, said goodbye to my friends for the last time and we didn't know how long and told each other we'd meet up in Animal Crossing. But for me, I think the thing that made this game so special was not just the timing and not just the game, but the whole community outside of it that spread. Anytime I looked on Twitter, you could see people posting their builds or just how happy they were to find their favorite Animal Crossing villager. There were people meeting up across the internet who had no idea who each other were to trade goods and items to help each other out. And the whole host of online communities that formed around the game just made it so unbelievably special. And I thought about this the other day. I genuinely don't think any game will ever take top place for me over Animal Crossing New Horizons. And that's purely because of everything that surrounded it. It was the perfect storm for the game to be popular. And I can reiterate what so many comments said about this being such an emotional pick because it genuinely helped me at a time where I couldn't go outside, I couldn't see anyone, but the villagers were always there on my island. And despite the fact that I've played hundreds of cozy games up to this point, nothing so far has topped Animal Crossing New Horizons for me. Now we're going to combine the next two as they were both very popular and that is Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom as I think they kind of go hand in hand so we're counting them as one. One of the comments read, to this day it's still one of my top three of all time. The sense of magic and the exploration being pulled place to place just to see what's around the next corner makes this a gaming experience that I'll never forget. Another comment says that it's a game that really brought me into gaming. The exploration was an absolutely magical experience and I'll never forget how it was to play this game for the first time. They also added that Tears of the Kingdom is maybe even more interesting to explore and just as beautiful as Breath of the Wild, but Breath of the Wild still has this warm, cozy feeling. And another comment read, Tears of the Kingdom, I just can't stop playing it. I beat Ganondorf and said, okay, I'll go back and finish Breath of the Wild, and then I'll come back, do all the shrines and quests and stuff I didn't do. I beat Calamity Ganon immediately and went back to Tears of the Kingdom. Even after I finished everything there is to do in Tears of the Kingdom, I can still play it over and over again because I can't remember how I did anything. If I was given the ability to go and experience one game for the first time all over again, I would always pick Breath of the Wild. It had this certain magic quality to it that so far not a single game has come close to matching. And that moment where you first step out on the Great Plateau and it pans out and says Breath of the Wild is one of the greatest openings of a video game I have ever seen. And I'd say I still hold this higher than I do Tears of the Kingdom. Despite the fact that what Tears of the Kingdom does is wildly fantastic. The fact that they made a game with that kind of physics on its own is incredible. However, the fact that they then got it to run on the Nintendo Switch as well as it does seems impossible. But the thing that really surprised me about it is how you could watch a thousand people do the same shrine in Zelda and you'd see them do it in completely different ways. I adore the fact that both of these games took puzzle solving in a completely different direction, both unique and both a lot of fun and these both hold such a high place in my heart. The next most voted game was Fire Emblem Three Houses. Again, I could not agree more. This is on my personal top list, so I am happy to add it to this one. If you don't know, Fire Emblem Three Houses is a turn-based RPG, 
But alongside the complicated and sometimes difficult turn-based mechanics is one of the best stories I have ever played. The thing that makes this stand out from other story-heavy games on this list is despite the fact that it's voice acted and done in such a fantastic way, there are multiple different endings to go alongside it as well. One of the comments read, everything in this game was top tier, from the character design, voice acting, cutscenes, music, gameplay, and environment were amazing. It also had a ton of replayabilities with the multiple paths and endings. Someone else said this is such a gorgeous game with a super rich story and compelling characters. Another comment said it was one of my first games rekindling my love of gaming and has over 200 hours of content and it's always cool to come back to it. This was a game that proved to me that I could do turn-based mechanic games and that I could get into them as well. And this is so high up in my list that barely any RPGs come close to it. The next game on today's list is not a Switch exclusive. However, it definitely deserves to be here and that is Stardew Valley. A game which needs no introduction, so let me just tell you why everybody loves it. One comment says the comfort, the replayability, the soundtrack, the little details. It's such a gem of a game. Someone else said that they bought it on sale after being skeptical of the graphics. I had no idea how good it was. Multiple playthroughs and almost as many hours as Animal Crossing now and I'm still never bored of it. And there are so many comments about people talking about how they can constantly come back to this and have played it multiple times through and are still loving it. And the crazy part about all of this is how much value you get in the game for the crazy low price it still sells at. I think this puts it perfectly. As someone said, it's different every save file. If you try and do the exact same things, it's different every time. I can play for five minutes or five hours and it feels the same. So on bad days, I can play all day, and on the days I need more, I can watch TV while playing it. It's just that comfortable to me. The next game on the list kind of surprised me about how much it came up, and that's Luigi's Mansion 3. Now, don't get me wrong, I adore this game. I think it's such a great little puzzle game, especially for this time of the year, but I genuinely did not expect it to show up in a top 10, and that is why I love this video so much, as you get so many different perspectives. Someone said it's the perfect, cozy, spooky game to play in the full and my all-time favorite Mario game. I'm almost done with it and I absolutely love the story and the gameplay so much. Luigi is adorable and I hope we get a Luigi Mansion movie one day. Someone else said this is the first Switch game I really loved. It's so cute and I love all the puzzles that could be solved. And to be fair, I also think it's one of the best looking games on the Switch. One thing Nintendo first party games do right most of the time is the graphics. Now I've been slightly sneaky and I've combined a few different answers for the next one. But next we have Pokemon, specifically Pokemon Sword and Shield and Pokemon Arceus. And I'm not even memeing when I say I had literally hundreds of replies on my posts about people's favorite games and Scarlet and Violet didn't show up once. If that doesn't tell you what you need to know about those games, I don't know what will. One comment read, Pokemon Sword and Shield was the first new generation of the Switch era, and I really grew to love the game for what it is and have spent over 4,000 hours in them. Someone else said, Pokemon Sword, I just fell in love with the region of Gala and the new Pokemon for that generation. Bolonlia is the most beautiful town Pokemon has ever made, and the cozy vibes it gives off are peak. I absolutely adore the characters. My favorite is BD. I know a lot of people have some valid complaints about it, but it is close to my heart. Someone else commented, absolutely love just wandering around the world areas, especially in the DLC. Also has a lot of customization options. I do enjoy Scarlet and Violet more, but they're overwhelming when I first started out. Someone else said, I keep going back to it whenever I'm unsure what to play. And being truthful, I do hold Sword and Shield pretty close to my heart for similar reasons. It's the thing that got me back into Pokemon after not playing it for a while, and it's actually the first Pokemon game I ever finished. I had never finished the stories of any previous Pokemon games, but I'm gonna have to agree with this single lone comment. The Pokemon Legends Arceus is just better. <laughs> One comment reads that it's their favorite because of the wild and untamed Pokemon you get to experience. But for me, it's not really to do with the story or the characters or anything like that. It was the shiny hunting. Don't get me wrong, I did enjoy shiny hunting in Sword and Shield. But it's the fact that I didn't have to battle any of the Pokemon in Arceus to shiny hunt that really made me have the most amount of fun. Because if I'm going to be honest, 
Battling is my least favorite part of Pokemon, and I love that for the most part, unless you're doing a part of the story, you can kind of skip it entirely. I also think it was a great gateway game into shiny hunting, as yes, the shinies were maybe slightly easier to encounter than other games, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I don't believe shinies are worth more or less in different games. If someone has fun doing it, let them be. Next, we have another game I wasn't expecting to be added to this list, and that is Spiritfarer. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a fantastic game. I just was shocked by how many people said it's their all-time favorite. If you don't know, Spiritfarer is a cozy management game where you play as a fairy master to the spirits. You'll build a bow and explore the world, caring for your spirit friends and releasing them into the afterlife after you've carried out their final wishes. The game ensures you know enough about each of the spirits before they go that saying goodbye is bittersweet. You'll get to farm, mine, fish, harvest and cook and craft your way across the seas. One comment said that I personally find it's the perfect blend between story, management, platforming and exploration. The art is absolutely stunning, the story is truly heartwarming. I came to care for each of the characters and still find myself thinking about their stories. This game is one that connects to so many people in so many ways. Another comment said this gameplay has everything I like. Exploration, management, some buildings, but what really got to me was the art, music and the story. I still remember all the time spent navigating the fishing in those stunning sunsets with the amazing music. And of course, the story. It's been one year since I played it, but I still think about that game very often. And another comment said, I have never and will never find a game like Spiritfarer that has me so enveloped in the story. I cried countless times because of how much I love the characters. The art style is beautiful and as a 2D animator myself, I was blown away with it. I played the game for hours until my hands physically hurt. For me, truly incredible games are ones where the story sticks with you long after the game is finished and long after the console has come and gone from your household and Spiritfarer is one of the rare games that successfully does that. Next up, we have Ooblets. Not only is this a personal favourite of mine, but apparently this is also a personal favourite of Gab Smolders. So what bigger endorsement do you really need about a cozy game? If you don't know, Ooblets is this perfect blend between monster hunting and farming slash life sim. However, unlike Pokemon, ethics were taken into consideration and instead of battling until one of you literally passes out, which like is terrible when you think about it, you actually dance battle each other. And the monsters in Ooblets are actually freaking adorable. And much like Pokemon, there are also rare colors of Ooblets and what they call gleamy Ooblets, which is the equivalent to shinies as well. Only these shinies are pretty cool because they have a little rainbow following them everywhere they go. In terms of farming sim mechanics, again, it has everything you know and love, but you mostly do this in order to get money so you can carry out the rest of the game or to get the select items which you need to go and dance battle some of the Ooblets. And Ooblets is all about you going around the land, trying to restore the internet so that each of the towns can be interconnected once again. One comment said, you get so much bang for your buck. The storyline is so good and wacky. It's unique and continues to have seasonal events. And they even announced a new event coming in October slash November. Right now, I've been playing the Halloween update and heckin' loving it. I just picked it up on Steam as well as it just came out there and got lucky enough to get two Gleamies in the first three in-game days. So I'm now playing that save file more than my previous one. But it's such a charming game and I love the fact it's having a second wind because of the Steam release. Now the next franchise I haven't played all that much, so I love the fact that it's been in so many comments, but this is Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise will see you hunt monsters, each with distinctive behaviours and dangers. But it's also so much more than that, as each monster you defeat will provide you with rewards, including materials, which you can then use to upgrade and craft weapons and armour to face even harder monsters. 
There's also a story to go alongside of it too, and the ability to play with your friends. One comment said it's gorgeous, exciting, with tons of content, and one of my all-time favourites. It also astounds me that it's portable on the Switch, and has so much personalisation and even coziness. They go on to say that the coziness comes from the fact that you can pet dogs and cats and you can have so many. You could also do expeditions, which are missions where you can freely walk around an area without having to face a monster. And despite the fact that it's multiplayer, there is a ton of single player content to do as well. Another comment says, it's my favourite franchise and I can sink hours into it without feeling bored. Also, Monster Hunter Stories 2 is more cute and cosy and I can really recommend it to people who like monster collecting games like Pokemon. I haven't played it in a while but I have played Monster Hunter Stories 2 before and honestly I was surprised by how much I fell in love with that game so again can definitely recommend it. Then we have Dragon Quest Builders 2 which was another very popular comment that I got. If you don't know Dragon Quest Builders 2 it's effectively Minecraft if Minecraft had like a proper story to go alongside of it. I actually managed to get this for like £22 in CEX so if you're interested in buying it, you can definitely find it for a good sale. This is a block building RPG set in a land threatened by an evil cult. A cult that's captured every builder of the world. But after escaping and washing up on the shores of a deserted island, you decide to embark on an adventure to gather the skills to become a fully fledged builder. This will see you not only build, but also explore the open world, gather materials and craft as well. One comment said, I love the storyline with the characters and how it unfolds. Plus, it's a sandbox game, so you can create the world around you. Easy to play for many hours and have a great time. Another comment says, it's absolutely amazing. Great and long storyline. So much to do, so much freedom to do it how you want. And the story lasts for a while, so you never get bored. Could not put it down and it's my most played game. No other game quite compares to it. Someone else said they've played it six times and will definitely be playing it more in the future. For me, I really struggle to get into the likes of Minecraft because for me, when a game tells you you can do literally whatever you want with no direction whatsoever, I feel overwhelmed and I do nothing and close the game down. <laughs> So for me, Dragon Quest Builders 2 is the perfect merge between yes, you can build and place items wherever you want, but there's an overarching storyline that kind of guides you as you do it, or at least until you've got enough under your belt that you kind of have an idea about what you want to go and build. Next, we have Mario Odyssey, a game which to this day has not made my top 10 Nintendo Switch game lists, and I stand by it, but for you guys, a lot of you seem to love it. Someone said, I always absolutely love the Super Mario games and Odyssey is such an incredible adventure game. I love all the different kingdoms you get to explore, so many different characters you meet throughout the story and so many objects you can turn into with Cappy. It's a fantastic game. I 100% finished it too. My all-time favourite Switch game. Someone else said it's largely because of the nostalgia of Mario 64, but also because of how smooth it plays and the creativity surrounding Cappy. The captures allow for so many unique puzzles and gameplay elements. To me, it's wild to think that this is still one of the prettiest games on the Switch, considering it was such an early release, but still to this day, it's one of the best looking games on the Switch. Next up, we kind of lump together another couple of games, and that is Xenoblade Chronicles. Now, this is a very biased take because I adore Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3 with my whole heart, but man, I love these games. <laughs> Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3 are some of the most ambitious RPGs that you will find on the Nintendo Switch. And to me, these both have some of the strongest stories you'll find in any RPG. But not only that, the world is absolutely massive. You can run around and explore to your heart's content. There's so many side quests to do alongside the full story and you get a lot of bang for your buck. Now, I will admit Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3 have very different vibes. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a bit more on the anime side and kind of took my brain a little bit to get into it. But once I did, I completely vibed with it. And then Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is potentially 
I'd say a little bit more adult. The themes themselves are a lot darker as they all surround the fact that each of these characters only lives for 10 years and you kind of get to see them grapple with that and the reality of what that means. But either way, some of the most fantastic RPGs I've ever played. One comment says that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is not only my favorite Switch game, but it might have also toppled giants like Final Fantasy 17, Chrono Trigger, Fallout New Vegas and things like that and it's taken its place as my favorite game of all time. Another comment says Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I love the world and exploring it. Urya is just so beautiful. Next is another personal favorite and that's Wildflowers. And this is a farming slash life sim that leans a lot heavier into the story elements than a lot of farming sims tend to go. And that is because it is fully voice acted. One comment says farming and life sims have always been my comfort games and fantasy type races are my favorite to read and write, especially witches. Seeing these combined and of course I jumped on this game and I'm so glad I did. The story is so rich and just an incredible journey. I've never cried playing a video game before, but even playing it through twice now, I still cry at certain parts. The characters are so well developed, and of course the voice acting helps bring them more to life. The world is so vibrant and beautiful, and the lack of almost any loading screens also help you be immersed. I've been gaming for 20 years and very few games on my list of ones I've actually finished. Wildflowers very quickly became added to that list for storyline part, and the devs have added so much more that I keep coming back every time. And the crazy part is, from what I understand, I don't think the updates are going to stop anytime soon either. We're just waiting on another announcement to see if there's anything more coming. But I couldn't agree with this comment more. The voice acting just transforms what is a bog standard farming sim with fantasy elements into a rich story that I am obsessed with. The final game on today's list is Disney Dreamlight Valley. Now I was a little bit surprised that this would show up on a best Nintendo Switch games list, given the fact that it is by far one of the worst running games on this entire list, but a lot of you seem to love it regardless, and this is why. One comment says there's always something to do and it keeps getting updated in a pace where it's not overwhelming, but not too slow. Animal Crossing was my favorite for over 20 years, and like everyone else, I played nothing when it came out on the Switch, but I also stopped playing because there's nothing more to do. So Disney Dreamlight Valley is filling the space, giving me the same vibe without being the exact same game. In some points, it's given me more depth than Animal Crossing, for example, the dialogue with characters and what you can do with them. And there are also a lot of comments reiterating about how special it is to see some of your favorite Disney characters pop up like this. That's it for your favorite Nintendo Switch games. But if you want to see some brand new Switch games that I've been absolutely loving and a couple to avoid, click this video here.